Excel is very well known for its number functions. In today's video, we're going to explore the number of different ways you can use it for your text functions, such as looking up capital letters within a range of data sets and fixing up your text. Now, without further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, first up, we have the upper formula. Now, what does the upper formula do? Just simply type it in, upper, tab, go to the text, and it's going to capitalize your text. So just press enter, and as you can see, you have a capital text. Now you can just come across here and double click, and it takes the formula down to all of your data. Now, similarly, the lower formula, what does that do? It makes it into lowercase text. So you just simply type that in, go and close your bracket, and it's a very simple formula. Once again, just double click and you have all your data here in lowercase. Now, proper is probably the one that you might use more frequently, and that's going to capitalize the front letters of every word. Once you click that, you just double click, and there you go, you have they're a proper case text. Moving on to the exact formula. Now, what does the exact formula do? It checks even if your case is the same. Now, in this example, we have a data set one and a data set two. If you look at it, it has the same data in it. Hello world, hello world, data science, data science. Let's just check this by using a simple equals this equals this to say whether it's a true or false, and it comes back true. Now, as you can see, if we add a space here, you might get a false, yes, but we don't have that issue, so we have a true for everything. Now, say you want to extract your capital letters or a different case, then you simply use the exact formula and it checks whether the two strings are exactly the same and returns to a false and it is case sensitive. So this is a super formula for when you're trying to figure out if your cases are correct or incorrect, can be used for various different reasons. Okay, so exact, open bracket, text one, comma text two and let's see what this returns us and it says it's false and that is exactly what we want because right now it's checking the actual case sensitivity of the two strings okay here we have a number of different formulas starting from the left mid right trim and substitute what are we going to do here? We're going to use them for different scenarios. So now here, the left function is used to remove the first characters of a string. So let's type in the syntax equals left. And now we click onto the actual data that we want, the text and the number of characters. Now in our example, we want the first five characters from that string. Close that and do that. So obviously you can use that for any X number of characters you want to do. Now, as you can see, you would expect maybe to have the full Excel in this box right here, but as you see, there's a little gap here. There is a space just before the Excel, so it's taking the space as a character and the first four letters. So it's simply taking characters and not taking just the visible characters that you see. If you double click here, you can see that it takes the first five characters, data with the hyphen, the first five numbers here, hello, etc. Now, the mid function. The mid function takes a piece of a string between the actual text there. And what you need to do is you just use the mid equals mid. We go onto the text. Now we want to check the start number and the start number from where we want to start the characters is five. And how many characters do we want? So actually we want six characters and we want um, five here. So we're starting from the sixth position and we are going to have a five characters. Now, when you press OK, you can see that it has the L. So this is a five up to here. The L is the sixth and it takes then five characters after that. So there you go. That's how to use the mid function. And that might be used for various different things as well. Lastly, we have the right in this group of functions. The right is just like the left, but instead of taking it from the left, it's going to take it from the right. So we have right here 
and we're going to choose five characters from the right as well as you can see functions the last i o n s is there but if you notice you have a little space here so uh, once again it's taking the space as a character double click it you have then as the data here one two three four five that's also the last five characters and the first five okay now that we've got a lot of spaces your data might be messy so how are we going to do this we're going to use a function called trim what does trim do it simply removes all the non-printable characters inside of the text so if you just read it it will remove all the spaces except single spaces between words which is exactly what we want we click that and then now this is a very useful function when you're using lookup formulas such as vlookup where you may have spaces and it doesn't exactly match your text so this is very important the substitute function literally substitutes something inside of your string so let's try that what we're going to do is use a substitute we're going to take the text and we it's asking us for the old text now we're going to take excel here so we put that in double quotes excel and close the double quote comma what is going to be the new text the new text let's put it in again double quote marks excel here you go now there is an instance number it's not going to be very visible here but let me just put here one for now and that tells us the first excel that it finds here it's going to change it to excel now let's do one thing let's add excel here and now you see that it has excel functions but if you wanted to change the second instance you would go up here and as you see instance number let's change to and now you're going to get excel functions xl so this is useful if you want to have if you have repeated data that you want to use a different instance not just the first one okay control z to go back let's remove that now go back here and double click and you can see that we've substituted excel here and also the excel in the number six data row here and that's how you can use the substitute function okay now moving on to the replace function replace is quite versatile where it can replace something from a particular start position with the number of characters now let's have a look at some examples over here so equals replace okay and we click onto the alt text now for simplicity we can add here six but we can also add the start position as the cell reference but let's just try six here and the number of characters is one so what are we do, trying to do here we're trying to replace the s here with something else and now comma and what's the new text so now you can click into the cell reference or you can simply type in whatever you want to change it with close that there and there you go now if we use the sub references then we can simply drag the formula but it's not really going to make much sense if we add smith to all of the others so what we can do is we can simply do a replace open the bracket the old text is here the start position is here number of characters and what are we going to replace it with it's this text right here of course this is very useful for when you have a series and you want to change a particular part of the series or anything else that changed now if you go down we are changing the dialing code so that's also very useful and if you want to go down and you have a spelling mistake that you want to change you could easily just change that there as well and if we just drag it down you can see that if you want to change the dollar into a euro you could do that so you can keep the original text with you as well okay moving on to concatenate text join and rate text concatenate simply takes a number of different text cells or strings and puts them together so you can do concat or concatenate it does a similar thing right take your first cell and then you take your second cell now when we close the bracket you can see that there isn't a space between the two names how do we get that space we go back up here and we add a double quote a space another double quote 
a comma and now you have a space between the names and you can just double click and drag down the formula there. Moving on to text join. Now text join is similar to concatenate but it has a slightly different syntax. What it asks you for the beginning is the actual delimiter so if we just click onto that we have a delimiter there and now that helps you if you're joining more than two or three or four so numerous numbers of text it's easier to do this than having to add the space at each single box now we're going to ignore any empty cells true and what are the text now let's just click that click that now just to demonstrate let's just click on to another couple of names here Let's close it and you can see that you have all the names with spaces. If you were to do that with a concatenate, you would have to comma and then you would have to double quote and space and so forth. And that's a very lengthy process. So concatenate is easier for one or two different text cells to join together, but not for numerous. Text join is definitely better for more than that. Now let's just go back here, close that and we can just simply double click and there you go you have everything now array to text is something that you might want to use it could be useful in certain circumstances and what does it do it simply takes a text array and it keeps it all together so now if we just highlight all of these names comma let's see what happens and you see it brings you an array of all of the names separated by a comma. You may need to use this in certain functionalities. Perhaps you're writing an email or you're writing something else that you don't want to have the list of incels, then array to text is definitely something that you can use. Last but not least, we have text before and text after. So let's have a look at how it works. It works similar to text join and we just go and type in text before. Now, what do we want? We want the text here and comma. Now we want a delimiter. So what do we want to separate before the delimiter that we're looking at? And currently we want to use the at sign. So let's just type in at. Well, if it's text, then you're going to have to put it into double quotes like this and comma instance number. Now, once again, you can have many instances of the at and you may not want the first one. So if that applies to you, you could put here two or three or whatever, or you could just ignore this by comma. And do you want it to be case sensitive? Well, in our case, we don't really care. So you can see how versatile this formula really is. And once again, let's come up and you can say don't match until the end or match to the end as well. So that's pretty interesting. If you want to maybe just check the first few of the characters, that could also be possible in this formula. And now we can simply just close up our formula, see what happens there. And there you go. You have the info before that. Now, if we go down and check, we can't get anything here because we simply have added the actual text here. So we can change that delimiter to also a cell reference. And in our case, we're going to choose the cell reference here. Press OK. And now you can see that anything before that, before the hyphen, it's going to come up now. Similarly, if we just drag the formulas, you can see that product is before the hashtag and the first name is before the colon. This is a pretty useful form formula as well. Text after, once again, it's similar to it. So all we need to do is text after. We open that, click onto the text that we want to select. And then once again, we go to our delimiter. So just remember, you need to put your delimiter, if it's not in a cell reference, in between quote marks so that it recognizes its text. Now we can simply close it right here and it can work. So anything after the at is there. Let's drag the formula and you can see after the hyphen and things like that. Okay, well, that was an interesting session. I hope that you definitely learned something and super cool formulas that you can use in your day-to-day -day work. Thank you for watching this video today. I hope that you've learned something new. And if you did, I would appreciate a like and subscribe. And until next time, happy spreadsheeting.